there's so welcome friends my name is joe bell and i'm excited beyond measure to welcome you to a, a new event we're doing it at sanctuary online we are doing tonight we're calling it sanctuary kitchen and so we're so happy that all y'all showed up and i also want to just say when you do something new sometimes it's a bit wiggly we've done our part we've had a blast filming the sessions we had even more fun eating the food <laughs> and um, we're excited to bring this to you tonight. And we're also excited to get your feedback. So as you enjoy, um, because this is the first time we're doing something and we may do it monthly, it might become a regular segment at Sanctuary Online as we um, develop it. We'd love your feedback on what parts you liked, what parts worked over Zoom, what parts may not have worked. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and give you a few of the kind of the house rules tonight. So. We love all of you coming tonight. And um, for those of you that are with us live, for those of you that are, are watching us via recording, we just want to um, love on you. Thank you for being a part of the Sanctuary community. And if you can, enable your video. We love to see your faces. And we love to see everybody kind of like you're sitting around in the kitchen, right? Waiting for dinner. This is so exciting. So we're in the Sanctuary kitchen. Some of you are in the living room. Some of you are in the dining room. You're looking through the area. What's he putting in now? Get in the mood, my friends, get in the mood. So also, if you can, you can put your, um, your video into gallery view rather than speaker view. That way you'll see all of us talking and we'll all feel like we're together. Also, we'd love it if you'd open your chat box and type in your first and last name. If we don't have your email address, we'd love you to put it in there because a couple exciting things tonight. Not only do we send you an email each week, we don't spam you, but we do send you one. Really, what happened last week and maybe a link right to the, um, to the recording. We also um, send you what's coming up in Sanctuary, let you know what's going on on the property. And if it's a food show, if it's Sanctuary Kitchen, you might actually get some recipes attached to that email next week. Can I get some applause on that one? Yeah, Kelly, thank you. <laughs> Actually, three recipes are coming at you with next week's um, email. So please go ahead and put your first last name, your email address in there, and uh, where you're calling from. How did you connect with us here at Sanctuary? We love all the interconnection that we're having from our various um, communities. Also, regarding communication, we have a text feature. So if you start to become addicted, Kristen, can I get a yes, um, to Sanctuary Online on Tuesday. But sometimes, especially during COVID, I forget it's Tuesday, you know. So what we do is in the afternoon and Tuesday, we send you a little single line text that says, hey, Kelly, it's Tuesday, Sanctuary Online tonight, see you there. So if you put in your, selfie, your cell phone number in the chat, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, also, if you want to reach out to us, we have a Facebook page where we also post the recordings. So if you think someone that couldn't be here tonight would just love to learn how to make the soup and to watch Ken actually do it, you can send them to our Facebook page, which is just Sanctuary in the Woods. And we'll put the recording up there. Finally, if you wanna connect with us, email, you can email us at talk to us at sanctuaryinthewoods.com. Now, Tonight, um, actually last week, we just finished a wonderful three-part series on how COVID has affected our lives professionally, personally, spiritually, some amazing conversations. Tonight, as you can see, February 8th, our first episode of Sanctuary Kitchen. And next week is really, really important. Um, we are hoping to gather a lot of your opinions. That's why we're saying your voice matters and do a focus group of sorts that basically is gonna say, um, what do you enjoy about the programming we've been offering? Um, what are your favorites? What do you, you know, we're trying to help you help us craft the programming going into 2022. So if you can make it next week, we'd really appreciate you being here. And then as you always know, the last week of the month, we have our amazing book club where we have read all of these doggone books. And this month, we are on The Code Breaker by Walter Isaacson. And um, that book cannot stop being a, a topic of conversation at our dinner tables. See, Ken, 
it's never far from him. It's like a dog with a bone, right? So if you want to get that book, it's not a fast read though, right, Ken or Cheryl? It's right, like yeah. Thing, yeah. Right? right. So don't jump on this one on the 20th and pop into the um, conversation on the 22nd. It's going to take you a little, a little more meaty to get through. So anyway, that's what we have. And I think what I want to tell you is that tonight we have... Um, seven videoed segments, short segments, okay? And between each of those segments, we're gonna have a little bit of conversation. You can ask questions, you can make comments, you can go, oh my God, that looks so good, whatever you want. Um, and also you can put your, your questions in the chat room as we're going along, okay? And Barb and Cheryl and I will scrape those up and make sure we get to address those in between the videoed segments. Finally, we've timed this out perfectly so if everything goes perfectly which i'm sure it won't um we'll end it at the hour but if you want to do a little bit of extra question and answer um or comments things like that um we will all we will, the rest of us ken the chef and a few of us will stick around 10 15 minutes or so if you'd like to to have that conversation so without any more ado barb you are our producer our videographer why don't you tee up that first video? Where is she? <clears throat> I thought it was going to be live. It's live. <laughs> <laughs> and it's quiet. Sanctuary Kitchen. In the next few months, we're going to be sharing with you some of our very favorite recipes and uh, showing you how to prepare them. We're also going to be sharing some of your favorite recipes, all in preparation for the publication this year of the very first uh, Sanctuary Cookbook. Tonight I'm going to be sharing one of our favorite soup recipes. It is especially delicious on these uh, cold winter nights. Uh, if you would like uh, a copy of the recipe, we'll be happy to send that to you. All you have to do in the, is put into the chat box, send soup recipe, and be sure that we have uh, your um, email address. This is an original sanctuary recipe. It is our recipe for sanctuary's bean sausage and black olive soup. The recipe we're going to be making tonight makes about 12 servings. You can easily half it or even quarter it, uh, but uh, it also freezes very well, and so you can actually make more than you might need at any particular time. This soup is easy to make, even though it does involve a large number of ingredients, but like so many soups, it's just a matter of combining the right things at, at the right time, uh, and it's so good that even if it were hard to make, it would be worth making. One of the things that we love about this soup is it's so easy to adapt to being either a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian soup. All you have to do to make it vegetarian is to use a vegetable broth instead of, for example, a chicken broth uh, and omit the sausage and you still have this delicious and nutritious and hearty one dish meal. Our favorite version, which we're gonna be making tonight is kind of a hybrid of that because we like to make it with a vegetable broth but then also to add uh, the sausage. Now, as any good soup maker knows, uh, the first secret to making a great soup is the broth or stock uh, that we use. Sometimes a recipe will specify one or the other. It will call for a broth or a stock, and occasionally it actually makes a difference, although not all the time. And if you've ever wondered about what the difference between those two things uh, is technically if you simmer vegetables and or uh, boneless meat in a liquid then the resulting product is called a broth. If you simmer bones uh, in a liquid then the resulting product is a stock. And because we make uh, this soup with, uh, with vegetable broth I'm going to start uh, tonight by showing you how we make our own homemade vegetable broth here in the sanctuary kitchen. Now, of course, you can go buy uh, a prepared broth uh, and use it, but I think 
that if you make broth like we're about to make it and then taste it, then anything else is going to look and taste sort of like vegetable flavored water. So I'll be right back uh, to show you how we make our vegetable broth for mm -hmm. our wonderful bean and sausage and uh, black olive soup here at Sanctuary. So, any questions to start off? Uh, please send soup recipe. Yes, Mary Ellen, we'll get that to you. If we've got your email, <laughs> you're gonna get that soup recipe, hon. <laughs> questions or comments yet? Or you're so excited and wanna just keep on going? I appreciate the, um, the definition of stock and broth because I didn't know, I didn't realize. So thank you for that. <laughs> I never knew either, Yvette. I'm like, <laughs> I just want to know where Ken's chef hat is. I don't see oh, his Brandy. chef. Brandy, got a fair question, Ken. Where did your chef hat go? Um, yes, I took it off for the remainder uh, of the of this production because it was just kind of uncomfortable, and I was afraid it was going to fall off. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, go ahead. Why don't we? Oh, Darcel, you got a question? I can see your hand up. Thank you. That's helpful in a large group. Is there anything Ken can't do? The man can <laughs> preach and he can cook. <laughs> it's a good combination in, in a church, Darcel. Don't you think? <laughs> you get fed spiritually and you get nourished. It's a good thing. <laughs> That's you know true. what? I. You know, I, I told someone not too long ago, I spent 50 years trying to nourish people's souls. And now my greatest joy is nourishing their bodies. There you go. Well, on that note, Barb, let's go see the second segment, which is what do you do with all those vegetables, Ken? Let's make some broth, not stock, broth. <laughs> I learned I learned as well of it. <laughs> <laughs> always end up with some scraps or trimmings from the vegetables that you are cooking and most of us just throw them away or compost them like we do here at sanctuary but the first secret to a really great vegetable broth is knowing which vegetables not to throw away but to throw into a freezer bag like this and then just throw it into uh, your freezer. We, we cook in large quantities here at Sanctuary, but obviously you can make as much or as little uh, of this vegetable broth as you might want to. And of course, both broths and stocks uh, freeze really well. So what I have here are a lot of vegetables, the trimmings from vegetables that we have uh, left over from meals that we have cooked here at Sanctuary during the last month. And in this particular mix that I have here, this is the last of those bags that I'm emptying right now. In this mix that we have today, we have trimmings from onions, celery, Brussels sprouts, carrots, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, rutabagas, bell pepper, and turnips. Now, of course, you can make stock with a lot fewer vegetables than that. Uh, you can make them from just the ones you happen to have on hand, or you can make them just from uh, the ones that you like the most. Um, we'll also send you this recipe just in the chat box if you say send the broth recipe and be sure that we have uh, your email address. And, and in that recipe, there will be a guide for the best aromatic vegetables to use when you are making broth. So I have preheated our oven to 300 degrees. I have dumped all of the vegetables into this big roasting pan. But before I put them into the oven, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna drizzle them with a really good extra virgin olive oil. Because as these vegetables begin to heat up, they're gonna start uh, uh, releasing all of their natural oils and fragrances and this olive oil is gonna bl blend with all of those um, to begin making our really wonderful vegetable stock here. 
So I'm going to put this pan into the oven for about an hour or an hour and a half at 300 degrees. And then I'm going to come back and uh, show you our next step. So stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. I, I will tell you, one of the things we learned is that if we have that camera angle, did you see all the doggy, um, what do they call that, uh, photo bombs? <laughs> so you met Gov, you met Bader, and you met Molly, if you were looking. So uh, we we did adjust that for the rest of the videos. Um, Cheryl, I see you've got a question out here. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I have yep. two questions, actually. One is... You had all these frozen vegetables and then not frozen. Do you have to thaw them out before you cook them all in there? Uh, no, uh, you do not have to do that. Uh, I just throw, I do a bag at a time. I fill up a bag, throw it in the freezer, fill up another bag, throw it in the freezer. Then when I get ready to make the broth, I just dump them all out, you know, into that roasting pan. They're going to be in a 300 degree oven for at least an hour and so you don't, you can thaw them if you want to. If they are thawed, that's fine, but you don't have to do that. Okay. My next question is you don't have to stir in the oil at all halfway through or no. when you start? No, 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 no. Just blend that because all that's going to go into a pot later. And so the blending okay. and the mixing will happen later. You don't have to do it yet. Yeah. All and right. Kelly, Thank you. you had, thanks, Cheryl. Kelly, you had a question? I asked, what veggies should you not include? Uh, yes, there are a lot of veggies you don't want to include, and they are the ones that might be bitter, the ones that don't ha necessarily have a lot of flavor in them. And so basically, uh, when you think about making a vegetable broth, you're thinking about aromatic vegetables and root vegetables. And, and if you want me to send you the recipe for this, I'll send you a guide for the recipe for the vegetables that are the best ones to use. And obviously they're the ones that have wonderful fragrances like onions and celery and peppers and cabbage and you know all those things that have those wonderful flavors to them. Some of them don't necessarily hurt if you throw them in, they just don't <laughs> help. And so, so I'll send you a list of the very best ones if you'd like that recipe. No. Thanks, Kelly. You know, I always used to just throw it all away. <laughs> I'm like, like, you saved that stuff? So we learned so much <laughs> just by living here. Uh, it was fabulous. Yeah. To um, Barb, why don't we tee up this third video? Let's get those vegetables out of the oven. Now, they've been in the oven, like Ken said, an hour, hour and a half. Let's get them out and create our broth. everyone. Welcome back. Uh, I have taken our vegetables out of the oven after about an hour and a half, just because we were using so many of them. I've already put quite a few of them into this pot because our next step is to make sure all of our vegetables and all the liquid that ends up in this big roasting pan uh, into this big pot of water. I've put about two and a half gallons of water into this big pot. There's really no exact ratio. Uh, you just want to be sure that you've got uh, a lot of water enough to hold all of your vegetables and then to cover your vegetables um, before we start simmering them. But we want to be sure that we do get all of the vegetables and all of the liquid. Uh, and you can see that there's quite a bit of liquid in here. So we're going to pour those remaining vegetables, that remaining liquid um, into that pot. Now, our next step, um, is to uh, make sure that uh, we, we boil these vegetables long enough to, that we're getting all the flavors and, and all the fragrances out of them. Now, before uh, we start actually boiling this pot, you can add seasoning at this point if you want to, but I actually prefer to wait until I know exactly what I'm going to be doing uh, with, the, uh, with this broth before I season it. However, there is, before we start boiling, one other thing that I want to do, and that is to add some fresh herbs to this pot, or herbs, 
as Julia would say. I have this, uh, this really cool little green thing. Uh, it's, it's rubber, silicon, flexible. It's an empty tube. It has lots and lots of holes in it. It has a top on it. And what I'm going to do is just cram it full uh, of fresh herbs before I put it um, into the pot with all of our vegetables. Now, our, um, our sage and our rosemary from our outside herb garden here at Sanctuary has survived the winter so far. And so I have some beautiful sage uh, to put into our, our little holder. And I have also some wonderful rosemary to stuff down in there. And then I also have, in addition to sage and rosemary, I have some sweet thyme, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of basil. These are from our greenhouse. Um, we grow uh, parsley and thyme and basil and lemongrass uh, and mint in our greenhouse throughout the winter. So just stuffing all of these things down into this little container and uh, crushing them, kind of crushing them as we go, uh, helps already to begin to release all of the, those wonderful fragrances and, and oils. And I'll tell you, by the time you put this into that pot with all of those vegetables and you get all this stuff going, your kitchen's gonna smell so good. You're gonna wanna eat your kitchen even before your, your soup gets done. Now, um, if you don't have access to fresh herbs, of course, you can just take some of your favorite herbs, uh, some oregano or some dried thyme uh, or parsley flakes and just shake them into the pot. And if you don't have anything like that little green thing that, that I have, you can go online and buy something just like that or very similar to it. Or, you know, you, the, you can get the little cloth bags, little pulled cloth bags um, online or in most supermarkets that are designed specifically to hold herbs like this. You can actually just tie a string around them and throw them in the pot uh, if you want to, or just throw them in the pot because after all, we are gonna strain this thing uh, when we're totally done with it. Now, what we're gonna do is bring this pot to a big rolling boil that can't be stirred down and then I'm gonna turn it down to a simmer and I'm gonna let it just do a mild rolling simmer for at least an hour. And then I'm gonna put this top on it and turn the heat off and just let it sit and steep for at least an hour. And that hour of simmering is gonna release all those wonderful flavors in, in the herbs and in the vegetables. Uh, and then letting it sit and steep for an hour after that is just going to intensify our broth. It's going to allow it to, to cook down just a, a little bit. Uh, so that, that's what we're going to do next. And then I'll be back to show you what our last step is going to be in making this wonderful broth for our soup tonight. All right, Ken, they're starting to get a little bit antsy and a little bit uh, cocky over here in the chat room. So, um, uh, Kelly, you had, why don't you start us up? You have a question there up in the top. Can you see that? I said, why did you cook the vegetables before you boiled them? <laughs> Fair question. <laughs> <laughs> good, good question. Putting them into the oven with nothing but olive, with olive oil on them in heat, in dry heat, starts to release oils and fragrances from those vegetables that you won't get if you just boil them. And so by the two-step method of first of all, kind of braising, baking, and then uh, boiling, you get all of those oils and fragrances out, uh, out of your vegetables. Uh, and what was that thing called? If I want to order it from Amazon, yeah, the that you little, put the herbs in. Was it from Amazon, <laughs> Ken, or is it from um? Uh, I actually yeah, so. got that one from <laughs> the little green thing I had. I got from Pampered Shelf. Pampered Shelf. But you yeah. can order, go to Amazon, and they have they have numerous things that are similar to that. <laughs> some are little metal balls. Some are you know you can you can find lots of different things to put your herbs into, to, to put them into a larger boiling pot. 
Okay. Start your search with herb, not cylindrical silicon. You may come up with something different. <laughs> oh my God, Kevin. <laughs> so, so Kevin did one search and he's not going to give us the results. And Kristen found one that looks like a rubber chicken and that's in the chat room. So thank you. It's I you. search for herb infuser, just so you know. <laughs> I knew we would lose control before the 30 minute mark. So, uh, <laughs> well, I won't need the rest of the soup. I can just take it after you boil it this, this time around. I'm good. I'm good to oh, go. Oh, you <laughs> My mouth is watering drop. as you were adding in the herbs. I'm ready. Yeah. Isn't it great? Yeah. Okay. So, if uh, you just wait, we're only halfway through, honey. Okay. Uh, Barb, go ahead and let's get that um, everything's in and boiling for what, Ken, about an hour, hour and a half? Yes. And we are now gonna strain it and create the pure broth. <laughs> Kevin and Kristen. <laughs> Welcome back. So now our broth has simmered for an hour. It has steeped for an hour. So the last thing we have to do is to strain it. And so in order to do that, we're gonna need another big pot, uh, just big enough to hold all of our final product. We're gonna need a, a big enough strainer like, like this one. Uh, you may be working with pots much smaller or bigger than mine. It doesn't make any difference as long as they are big enough. And the final thing that we need is some good cheesecloth. You know, you can buy this white cheesecloth for cooking purposes. Uh, you can get it online or in just about any supermarket, and it works just fine. Uh, you just need to be sure that you're always either doubling it or tripling it just to be sure you don't have any accidents. Or you can go on Amazon and get this really good single-layer uh, shelf-quality cheesecloth that I'm using right here. It's not expensive at all. Uh, it guarantees that you're going to strain out every solid particulate uh, of any kind. And you don't have to worry ever about any kind of rips or tears, which do sometimes uh, happen with some of the flimsier cloths. So what we do then is we just move all of our broth and our simmered and steeped vegetables from one pot to the other one. And we let all of that juice seep down and then what we're left with, of course, are all of our vegetables. Once we've done all of that, I'll just pull the corners of this up and give this a big squeeze to be sure we get all of those nutrients out of there. Uh, by now, this is so vitamin rich, it's just, it's just crazy. And what we're left with is a beautiful and fragrant and nutritious vegetable broth, which you can either freeze or share with your family and friends or use immediately uh, to cook with it. So I'll be back in just a few minutes uh, to show you how we use this broth to create our sanctuary beans, sausage, and black olive soup. All right, friends, any questions, any comments, any comments about the size of Ken's pots, anything at all, or the <laughs> eggs hanging over there? Yeah, that you got to knock your head on? Absolutely. <laughs> it's all part of the show. <laughs> Anybody, any comments? Janice, you're on you're on mute, hon. <laughs> okay. Do you use the um uh outsides of all the vegetables, the everything like that? And the cores and all that? Yeah, I mean yes, basically, yeah, any of the trimmings. Um, you know, like if you have a stalk of celery, use the end of the celery. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So you don't have to be particular about what you use as long as they are trimmings, you know, of the vegetables themselves and mm -hmm. as long as they're clean. Yeah. yeah. Good okay. question. Yep. Yeah, and Cheryl? Do you we, oh, go ahead, Kelly. I'm sorry. Do you reuse the cloth? Do you wash it and reuse it or throw it away? I, I, I throw them away after I use them. Uh, you could wash them and use them again if you're using that good single layer cloth. Uh, they, if you're using the white 
a cheesecloth that you have to use two or three layers of, you just need to throw that away. But if you're using the really high quality cloth, you could wash it and use it again. I, I tend to just throw it away after I've used it. And Ken, it comes in a roll, right? So you cut off however much you want, a piece of yes. it or what? Oh. Yes. Okay. yes, it's on Amazon. Just go to Cook's uh, Cheesecloth on Amazon. It's not expensive at all. You get large quantities of it so that you can cut it into whatever shapes you know, sometimes I need small shapes, you know, like a few inches in, in squared. And then sometimes like what we were just doing, you know, I need a piece of cloth that's like two inches, uh, two feet squared. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, get, you get the cloth in large bolts kind of so that you can, um, you know, you can cut any shape <clears throat> and size that you need. All right, I don't see any hands up or other questions in the chat box. This next segment is a little longer, but it is where I think I think the core can the heart right assembling and sauteing yes. all those fabulous ingredients. So I guess the question I have on this one too, Ken, is does the order that you're going to put these in, does it matter? It matters. Um, as I said earlier, this soup is easy to make, but it is the, the secret is combining the right ingredients at the right time. And so, yes, I'm going to introduce you to all those ingredients in a certain order, and then you will see that that is the order in which we actually use them. All right, I'm sure that's the part I would have screwed up. Just chuck it all in there. But so I had Barb, go ahead and <laughs> tee up this next video. It's, it's so good to see all your smiling faces and your little focus. I can tell the cooks are like, hmm. <laughs> Welcome back. Now that we have our nutritious and delicious vegetable stock made, it's time to assemble all the other ingredients for our soup. I mentioned earlier that this soup is actually easy to make. It's just a matter of combining all of the right things at the right time. So I have all the other ingredients here assembled. First of all, I have two cups of large white lima beans. Actually, any dried white bean will work for this recipe, but we really like these, uh, these big limas. And as you may know, dry beans all come like this. They all come really hard and dry. But, and there is a fast cook method that you can use with any dry beans, which is simply to cover them with water, bring them to a boil, boil them for two minutes, cover them, and then turn the heat off and let them sit for at least an hour. And that does work. But I think if you have the time, it's always worth it to just go back to that old time method of soaking them overnight before you cook them. And the reason for that, I think, is that they hold together better through the, through the rest of the cooking process if you do have the time to do that. So I soaked those beans overnight and then I cooked them for about an hour this morning. So if you could see them here, you would know that they're nice and tender, but they're also still really, really firm. Then we have about a third to a half of a cup of olive oil. And then for the first vegetable mixture that we're going to add to our soup, we want uh, two and a half cups of chopped onions, uh, two nice big stalks of celery chopped, and then a cup to a cup and a half of chopped carrots. Tom loves carrots as so well. Always add uh, like a few more of those. And you can see these, these vegetables are not diced. They're chopped. They're still big enough that even after the soup is done, we're still going to be able to to taste their individual flavors uh, and feel their individual textures. Um, I want to share with you that this is a, about the, the best little kitchen gadget I have found in years. 
As you can see, it's just a very narrow little blade. Every kitchen needs a good cleaver, and I got a good cleaver. But you can see the difference here. This is just a very narrow little blade, and especially when you're working with vegetables, this can save you a ton of time. For example, I need another half cup of onions for this soup, so I just take a whole onion, cut it in half lengthwise, lie it down flat with the root on my left side, then I'm going to make about four or five vertical cuts, one horizontal slice, do my chop, and there's my other half cup of onions for this recipe. This particular one happens to be a Ronco stainless chop and serve knife number nine. We'll put that into the, to the uh, chat for you just in case you want to go out and get it. But it really is a wonderful little tool uh, that will save you an awful lot. Then I'm going to want about two teaspoons of good uh, kosher salt. We keep our kosher salt in this beautiful little ceramic fish that our great friends uh, Will and Joanne Purchase brought us back from Mexico. They're two of the best cooks uh, that we've ever known. And I have a heaping teaspoon of Italian seasoning. This is a dry mix of different herbs, which I think you can find just about everywhere. Now, this particular blend um, includes marjoram, uh, uh, rosemary, thyme, sage, oregano, and basil. If you happen not to be able to find it, of course, you can just make up your own uh, mix from individual dried uh, herbs. Then I have 14 ounces of andouille sausage that is cut into bite-sized pieces. Any good smoked sausage will work. Um, andouille is a Cajun smoked pork sausage that has a wonderful flavor, particularly when you put it into soups. We also use it for making red beans and rice and um, lots of other uh, recipes. Then the next thing that we're going to want to put into the vegetables we're going to add in sequence, we have two uh, chopped small zucchini squash here and two small uh, bell peppers. I used one green bell pepper and one orange that's obviously uh, just up to you. I have about eight cloves of uh, garlic that is minced. And then I have six ounces of tomato paste, a half of a cup of dry red wine, some good uh, freshly ground black pepper to taste. And then if this recipe has a secret ingredient, this is it. Th this is about two cups of chopped black olives, but they're not just regular black olives, they're Kalamata olives. And if you know about Kalamatas, you know they have that wonderful, briny, uh, earthy, salty taste that just works so beautifully with all of these other uh, vegetables, particularly. And then I have two teaspoons of lemon juice, just that acid added at the end to, to anything. It's just going to make all of our, our best uh, flavors pop there. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is to, um, to saute uh, begin our soup by sauteing uh, our first set of, of vegetables. There's just no substitute, as you can see, from having all of your ingredients uh, assembled and measured before you even start cooking. It just makes the whole process, you know, go more smoothly, and it also makes it more fun. So we're going to start by pouring our olive oil uh, into a big Dutch oven. I like to use a big Dutch oven when I'm making soup or stew or gumbo because that way I don't have to worry about boil overs, you know, and all of, of that stuff. Then when our oil gets really hot, the first thing we're going to do is add our mixture of onions, carrots, and celery. In, in French cooking, this trio of vegetables is called a mirepoix. If you watch cooking shows on television, you're familiar with that word. It's a, it's a mirepoix. But if you substitute just one vegetable, if you substitute bell pepper for the carrots, so instead of starting with onion, celery, and carrots, you start with onion, celery, and bell pepper, then you've got the trinity 
which is that wonderful beginning of so many Cajun and Creole dishes. And we make quite a few um, Creole and, and Cajun dishes around here. And with um, Mardi Gras coming up next month, it wouldn't be surprising if we uh, see some of those around here before too very long. So we're going to add our vegetables to the oil here. It's hot enough that they're beginning to sizzle just a little bit. Can you hear that? I wish you could smell that. So we're going to saute those vegetables for about five minutes, stirring them occasionally. That's going to allow our our onions to begin to you know, become translucent. And then after five minutes, we're going to add our 14 ounces of andouille sausage. And we're going to saute those with the vegetables for about five more minutes. Then we're going to add our uh, zucchini squash and peppers. And we're going to saute all of that for about five more minutes. And we're going to be adding, for all of this sautéing that we're doing, our two teaspoons of kosher salt, our dried Italian seasoning, and our eight cloves of minced garlic. So that's going to be about 15 minutes that we're going to be working here with our sausage and our vegetables. And after, so I'm going to do that. And then when we come back, we're going to add all of our other elements and finish our soup. So I'll see you in a few minutes. So Joanna and Will, I know you're sitting back far from the computer, but you got to unmute. You got to give us a favorite food story here. Uh, Joanna and Will, our friends, they are they live in Canada. They also live in Mexico, and they would always stop by Sanctuary for a few days um, and stay with us en route up to Canada, en route down to Mexico. We even vacationed at their beautiful, gorgeous home in Mexico with them one January. That every time it gets cold here, Joanna and Will, we just can't not remember those wonderful times around the pool coffee in the morning just doing that mexico thing can you do you have a little comment you're on you're on mute so will can you unmute or something can you guys unmute you had everything perfectly poised i apologize but I know you got to have a cooking story. These two are amazing cooks in their own right, like Ken just said. Oh, yes, okay. they are. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, come on. You've spoken from one who's the best himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can you hear us now? Yeah, perfect. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So my favorite cooking story is, is not of us cooking, but of taking Ken at 7 o'clock down to the beach in town and having oh, him buy yes. dinner from the fisherman. And yes. then every, uh, Ken and Tom and I, I cooked a fabulous meal. So that's one of the favorite things is going down to the fisherman and getting a fish with you and having him cook it. I remember that Those so well. This was in Iztapasihuatanejo, Mexico. And Will and I got up at five o'clock in the morning and went down. We actually <laughs> saw the we saw the fishermen coming in in their boats and bringing their fish out and laying them out on the shore. And we were able to to choose our fi fish. And it's just there's there was just nothing like the taste of that kind. <laughs> Uh, freshness. It was just wonderful. We also visited them in northern Canada at their home in Thornbury, northern Canada, and experienced, uh, you know, their wonderful uh, cooking skills there as well. So, so our friendship has been culinary, <laughs> you know, in so many wonderful ways. Yeah, we just miss you guys and love you so much. Uh, and oh, and we hope we get to you. do this again. We miss you. We miss you a lot, too. It's yeah. just not the same anymore with 
with COVID, you know, I'm about ready to stick a fork in my eye. <laughs> There's a, we are. Uh, I, I do want to, I do want to say some one thing though. You guys would not have been able to do this fishing thing without me. We went down there oh, to the fish place and there wasn't yes, any were. fish because yes, it was yes, a Sunday. Yes. And we had to ask them why not. And so I had to translate all that for you. That's, so don't that's forget. Right. That, okay? that's right, you and did. Yes. And, and as, as the, did he say? <laughs> and, and as the, uh, as the uh, vacation went on, you uh, remembered and got much better at speaking Spanish. And Ken was amazing <laughs> at learning Spanish. Like, I don't have a brain <laughs> left. And you were just absolutely <laughs> amazing at learning. Yeah, it was so great. Yeah, he was very good. Oh yeah, wonderful okay. memories. Thank you. I, I need to ask one question. How are the chickens yeah. and goats? Oh, the chickens and goats are wonderful. Uh, are we, we have a, we have a whole bunch of new goats, and Tom just today met with a new fencer to do to repair some of our fences because we've got goats that are now getting out and are all over the property. So uh, we so we got goats all over the place around here right now. Uh, uh, but we're working on we're working on that. So the chickens and goats are great. Oh good. Yeah, good. It's a little oh, weird, Joanne, because we've got Labradors and doodles and goats and they're all just kind of chasing each other. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit weird right now. <laughs> So let me, I want to show cooking you all. Shows. Yes. Pardon? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always interesting here, right? If it's not interesting, we add some drama, you know, and we make right. it interesting. But um, I want to show you all just really quickly. I'm going to share my screen for a moment and show you some of the photos of the saute process. Okay, so first, this is what it looked like, right, Ken? All by itself, simmering away. Yes. And then yes. you were Maybe adding more. them. This is why I asked about the order. So the sausage goes in. That's right. And then yes. now here's what's challenging for me. The stuff in these two bowls looks green and white. So this is Ken. Zucchini and peppers. Thank Zucchini you. Zucchini and peppers. But just the green pepper, right? Because green, here's the yellow bell pepper. Bell peppers and zucchini. <laughs> here's the little that's yellow also pepper. A, that's also a bell pepper. It's just a yellow bell pepper. Yeah, it makes all the difference, okay? So there we go. So they look alike, but they're very different folks. You gotta follow the recipe. Here's what it's starting to look like. And then Ken, oh, right here. You add a tomato <laughs> base, right? What is the change in the color there, yes. Ken? I'm curious. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's just, just, just the combination of those things plus the uh, vegetable stock. The vegetable stock coming in. Yeah, that's what it is. Actually, you're yeah. adding the vegetable stock. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. That's that's on the next video. Oh, see, I'm trying yeah. to be that bridge between those two. We have a couple questions. <laughs> um, there's lots of comments about the about the olives, Ken. Most of the most of the folks were like black olives. Mm, oh, Kalamata. Okay. Um, but I think, hold on, Becky. Where are you, Becky? There you are, Becky's iPhone. Just, Becky, you're not good with olives at I all, I cannot. Right? I can't do olives. <laughs> Period. I just can't do if them. You, so yeah, if, what, what can I substitute? You, you don't have to substitute anything. Uh, one of the wonderful things about this soup is it has so many different vegetables and ingredients in it that if you need to leave one out, uh, you don't have to worry about that. If you can't do olives at all, you know, just leave them out. That's that'll be that'll be fine. You'll still love the soup. It'll still be nutritious and and flavorful and and delicious. Um, if you you may, if you're not familiar with Kalamata olives, but you only know about green olives or regular black olives, try a Kalamata you know, before you decide not to use them because they're very different. There was also a question about salt here. And, and that's a very important question. Uh, kalamatas are very salty and briny and I do not rinse them. But if you are concerned about the amount of salt, there's very little other salt in this soup intentionally. 
But if you're concerned about salt, and many of us who are hypertensive, you know, have to be concerned about salt, you know, rinse your kalamavas before you put the soak them or rinse them before you put them into the soup. That reduces some of that brine and salt. Um, and, and so that's a concern for many people who are watching their salt. Ken, um, there was also the big red pot. Is that Kevin? Is it a crusette? Is that a, a name brand, Kevin? Or does it mean really big, heavy yes, pot? Yeah, our well, all of our big cooking pots are Le Creuset. Uh, we've accumulated them over years. Uh, as you probably know, they're very expensive, but they're also the best. Uh, and so it's taken us a number of years to assemble, you know, all of our Le Creuset uh, uh, pots. But yes, it is Le Creuset. And it weighs 453 pounds, Kevin, because I freaking wash it. Oh, my God. I got, a, I got like a back brace when I do the dishes <laughs> yes, around here. Where even even Tom, right, Tom, feels, yes. Tom feels sorry for me. He's like, oh, Joby. I'm like, I know. Hold on. And I get my legs braced and I move that sucker, you know? So, <laughs> Janice, you got your Janice hand has up. a question. Yeah, Janice. You. You on mute. You on mute, Janice. Janice, hold your space bar down. Just hold your space bar down. Sorry. That's okay. I did it. Um, what's the difference in kosher salt and other kinds of salt as far as taste yeah. or use? Thanks, Janice. Right. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, kosher salt is a salt that is processed, that is less processed than iodized table salt. It is, it is just a, uh, first of all, it's grainier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as small grained as, as iodized table salt. And it's processed differently in that it doesn't have as much iodine added to it. It is just a, I think it is just a purer form of salt. And so uh, in cooking particularly, uh, we always try to use uh, kosher, good kosher salt. And it's no more expensive. You can buy it anywhere. Um, you know, it's just the difference is it's less iodized and it is also uh, coarser in, in, in the, the texture. How does that compare with the new Himalayan salt? Yeah, Himalayan pink salt. The pink Himalayan, yes. We also use the pink Himalayan salt here at Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. we, we keep it on our table all the time. Joby, I think Joby almost always opts for the pink uh, Himalayan salt. Yes, and it is also just a less, uh, a, a, a it is, it has, it's processed less. It's yeah. more of a natural product. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if you, if you yeah. use the Himalayan kosher, or Himalayan versus the kosher. Do you know any difference there? Or are you like, yeah, not just you're not using table oh, no, salt. No, 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 no. Of course, yeah. If you, yeah, if you have table salt, uh, Himalayan pink, kosher, you can use any of them. Uh, they will all produce pretty much the same product. You know, we just use the kosher uh, because it is a less processed product. All right, and so I'm going to talk to the two shit disturbers here. Kristen says. She starts every recipe doubling the garlic. What would happen if she did that, Ken? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> okay. This there. is a, hands off to a good start. <laughs> this this is a this is a recipe that I created. Okay. Okay. I started with just a simple bean soup, and then I just kept adding things. And if I didn't like them, I'd take them away and kept adding. So this is the final product of like actually about two or three years. Of, 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 of creating uh, this, this soup. And, and most people would think eight cloves of garlic is too much, you know, for I, a soup like up, this. I but I right. just, Frank, my principle is you can never have too much garlic. Garlic, you know, uh, garlic is healthy. Uh, it is tasty. Um, and it's just hard to have too much garlic. And so I've got eight cloves and I'm, when I'm talking about a clove, I'm talking about something the size of the end of your thumb, not tiny little things, you know. So it's actually about four tablespoons 
of minced garlic in this recipe. And I think it's, it's wonderfully healthy and, and it's always just enhances flavors. And I just don't, don't think you can go wrong with garlic. Do you yeah, I am grow seeing... young garlic down there? I missed that, Kevin. Do you That's grow your own garlic? We have never grown here. We have grown, grown, grown your garlic. own garlic. Yeah, but yeah um, well, you, you got to wait till next year because you got to plant it in the fall. But right. Um, right. I do I do it with a friend of mine in uh, Toronto. And um, I end up with, this year we got so much that I'm probably going to last with enough garlic and then still have some left over when the next batch comes in in the summer. Uh, we um, and it's, it's, yeah. We do grow our own onions. We grow our own onions, but we haven't grown garlic yet. Nice. The flavor difference is amazing. Uh, highly recommend I'm sure, it. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Kevin, Thank you asked you. about capers. We talk, once Since we're talking about salt, I'm with you. I, I don't think there can be too much garlic, but I am sure nothing can have too many capers in it. I'm sure. <laughs> I just need them out of the top oh. of the car. Well, I just thought of it as a, I love capers. Uh, I just thought of it as, as a yeah. possible substitution if, if it's an olive issue. Capers have that similar yeah. texture, saltiness that, that, would, that would suit it well. Yes, that's a, that's a very good idea. I had not thought about that, but that's a wonderful idea. If you can't deal with olives, then capers are a wonderful substitute. Capers are literally the, the seeds of the nasturtium plant. And, and when you buy them, uh, you know, in the store, uh, uh, they're called non-parial capers. Non, you want a bottle of non-parial capers. That means that they have not been firm, uh, uh, in, uh, they literally have been impregnated is what that means. But you know, that they're just virgin seeds and then they have been treated and you could, you could uh, rinse some of the, saltiness off of them, but they would still give you that great briny uh, kind of, uh, of taste. So thank you, Kevin. That's a good, that would be a great substitute in this recipe. All right, Becky, take it, take that note. I'm going to, we're going to be, we're going a little bit over because I love your conversation. So Barb, go ahead. We've got two short videos, but we have to finish this thing. Oh my goodness. So if you can hang on, um, please do. Barb's going to show us this next video. It's just a couple minutes long, but we got to finish this soup. All yours, Barb. We're back and our vegetables have had plenty of time to simmer and to get really nice and tender. And of course, by adding that sausage right in the middle, which was already smoked, so it was cooked, but all those flavors have now had a chance to blend. And so our next step, uh, you may have noticed that I have I have eight cups of our vegetable broth here uh, with um, a whisk. So let me explain to you what that's all about. A lot of soup recipes call for adding tomato paste uh, toward the end. But in my experience, sometimes um, if it's toward the end and all your other ingredients are already in your soup, then adding tomato paste, you either end up with big lumps of tomato paste or if you try to dissolve, your tomato paste, uh, then you end up tearing up a lot of your other ingredients. So what I like to do is first of all, just whisk my tomato paste really thoroughly into this vegetable broth so that it's really dissolved quite well. It only takes a second with a whisk to do this. It's just one little extra step and what it does is make sure that when you do add all of this liquid to all of those vegetables, then uh, you have a really smooth product where, where the integrity of all of those ingredients that we've been guarding throughout this process, you know, are still preserved. All of our vegetables are still whole, our beans are still whole. We're gonna be able to taste them, uh, of their textures and, and their flavors. Um, so this is just one little step here that's gonna, gonna guarantee to us that we're not gonna have any problems uh, later. So now I'm going to add eight cups of our vegetable stock to our, uh, our sauteed vegetables and sausage. And of course, we've got more of our stock standing by over here, just to be sure that we have 
uh, enough to get our soup to the consistency that we're going to want it at if we uh, want to add more to it. And then we're going to add all of the rest of our ingredients right now uh, to the soup. We're going to add our two cups of sliced Kalamata olives. We're going to add our two cups of dried cooked beans to all of that liquid. We're going to add our half a cup of dry red wine. Those tannins in there are going to connect to all the proteins in, in, in that soup and they're going to make just so much smoother. And then we're going to add our two teaspoons of lemon juice, which is going to brighten everything up. And then there's nothing better. You know that when chefs are asked, what, what, is, what do you call the king of spices? Almost everybody says salt, but chefs say pepper. Black pepper. And so we're going to add some fresh ground black pepper to this recipe. We're going to mix all of those ingredients together. You don't just have a nutritious soup here. You have a beautiful soup here. And now we're going to let all of that simmer for about 15 minutes. Um, and then when we come back, uh, we'll be ready to serve this delicious bean and sausage and black olive soup. We'll be right back. Oh, goodness. So Barb is teeing up the next uh, quick video to finish everything. Um, <laughs> I love the comment. I love your eyes uh, late lighting up, Yvette, when he was uh, cranking that pepper in there. I'm like, I'm with you, girlfriend. <laughs> you know, they don't serve pepper in Brazil. I had friends actually give me pepper to take to Brazil because they don't use it. Um, but though there's hold on one question before you hit play, Barb. Um, Kristen's asking, Ken, can you simmer it in a crock pot? This last piece, could you simmer that in a crock pot? Absolutely. I, I've even I've done that when I've made a smaller version um, of this soup. Uh, I put it in a crock pot and let it simmer. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. You can do this in a crock pot. Make sure all of your ingredients, you know, are are prepared ahead of time so that you can put them all in at the same time. Uh, then just put your crock pot on low, and uh, you know, for a couple of hours, you got basically the same product. All right. Before you go again, Barb, um, Janice sneaking a question in there. I know the answer to this one. My God, Janice, we've got a freezer the size of Texas here. Um, Ken, Janice is asking. <laughs> Do you ever prepare just the broth ahead and then freeze it? <laughs> Absolutely. The Absolutely. broths and stocks both freeze really well. So like in this particular pot that I made for this uh, episode tonight, uh, you know, we used about 16 cups of the broth, but we made about 30 cups of the broth and so I've already put it into smaller uh, uh, Tupperware containers and put it in the freezer. You know, so anybody anybody who lives around us who wants some broth, come by. Oh, I got a freezer full. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the answer to that one, Janice. All right, Barb, let's see this last couple of minutes here. And uh, I know I just want to honor folks time. So now we let our soup cook for 15 or 20 minutes. That allowed it to heat through uh, at the same level, and also for all those wonderful flavors uh, to blend with each other. And then I have transferred our soup into this beautiful soup bowl with its own ladle. Presentation is so important when we're cooking because remember, we do eat with our eyes first. And so what we'll do now is just transfer this beautiful, delicious, and nutritious soup into individual bowls and you know a soup like this just begs for the right bread uh, any good crusty bread will work um, we've eaten this soup several times with with toasted garlic bread which is wonderful but i created another recipe which is the bread that i think is the perfect complement um, to this soup and this is it this is our sanctuary bacon 
uh, goat cheese and sun-dried tomato bread. And so together, these two things, along with a salad, will be the perfect dinner for our sanctuary family here on one of these cold winter nights. Thank you so much for joining me for this first episode. And uh, bon appetit. Buen provecho. And y'all enjoy. I'll see you the next time on Sanctuary Kitchen. Oh, come on. Unmute. I'm I'm sorry, but this was good. <laughs> this was good. <laughs> So uh, you have all your mailing addresses, right? You can like mail us out a little sample. <laughs> <laughs> or come visit. Or come no. visit. Yeah. yeah, that's a better soon. answer. Soon. That's a better answer. Yeah, soon. Oh my goodness. Um, I got a couple more yeah, questions again. Awesome. And then I want to get to the poll, my friends, because yeah. just in case you liked this, and just in oh, case you'd like us to do it again. <laughs> Just in case we have an opening in our schedule for Mardi Gras, just in case you might have a voice in what we make. Wouldn't that be cool? So give me just one minute, a couple questions here. Kevin is asking about pre-cutting ingredients. Oh, <laughs> I know this answer too, Kevin. Ken. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay, we, okay, so Kevin, here's the, here's the deal. We eat dinner five nights a week together and Ken or Tom cooks and Barb and Cheryl and I are the cleanup crew right? We do all the dishes and put everything away and clean the kitchen and stuff. So when Ken cooks, I'm going to throw it into the bus, Ken. It's a shit show with bowls and this. And that. Come on, Nick, give it up. You know, just there's, we start to do the dishes. And, 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 my, my lips are sealed. I can't reveal anything. <laughs> you know, it's true, Nick. And even then, Tom, Tom normally says, I did a dishes this afternoon for you, Joe. Like he already did the first wave for us. Oh my God. Then Tom cooks and there's like just the utensils. Everything else has been done. So it's true. It's <laughs> give me true. some flavor. So, so Ken, Kevin was asking, do you always pre-cut your ingredients? And when you cook at home without the cameras, one, the pre-cut, two, tidy counters? Not so much. <laughs> yep. Okay, first <laughs> answer to the first question is basically yes. I really believe in what's called the chef's setup, you know, where you assemble all of your ingredients, uh, you cut them or prepare them to the right sizes, you know, so I always do that. And, and I believe in that. And that makes cooking really fun and interesting and easy uh, uh, to me. Uh, but I'm not so good, Kevin. About they're telling the they're telling the truth about me here. I, I am. I do leave a big mess behind me you know, when I cook. And I'm so thankful. I'm so, so do thankful I. For all these people who come along and clean up after me. Okay. <laughs> I know Usually it takes two bed. dishwasher fills just for the just for the setup cookware. Oh my God, it's it, it's it's hilarious, Kevin. So I know Nick knows this. I know Joanna will. Anybody who's actually been here, Tom, Kelly, Darcel, Brandy, yeah, and Kim, you know, you know. So we're not telling you anything you wouldn't tell anybody else. But you know what? It's worth it. Is it worth it, my friends? When you sit down at table at Sanctuary, I tell you what. You know, when we had the flood a couple of years ago. The dining room, which was parquet wood floor, was completely mm. destroyed. And I kept a little, about six or seven little panels of that floor. And the dining room table, I mean, could any of you have been here? Just imagine if that table could talk. I mean, the stories, the people, the love, the meals, the spirituality around that table. That, that thing... Goodness, you can't put a price on it. So um, we're happy to we're happy to clean up after Papa Ken. <laughs> happy to do it. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, my friends, I have. I don't think we have any more questions. I'm gonna launch a poll, and we'd love your support. You'll be. So, oh, I think I did be, it, Ben. Be, too late. Be, before. Okay, okay. Before we do anything else, I just want to do a shout out to Darcel, who met with Adam Schiff today 
in Washington, D.C. as his legislative liaison to the uh, mail carriers uh, uh, union. And, and Darcel met with Adam Schiff today. They went through a, a huge uh, agenda uh, of, of work that they're going to be doing together. And we're just so proud of Darcel. I can't even tell you. Yes. Yes, and thanks, Darcel. Hey, Darcel. Hey. Okay, so I can see the votes coming in. Uh, we do expect it to Good. cook during Mardi Gras, my friends. And so just like you learned tonight, Yvette, about a, what's, a, what's a broth and what's a stock? Like, who knew? Or putting vegetables in a certain order. Who knew? Who knew not to throw out all that crap I've been throwing out all my life? For 60 years, I've been throwing out the stuff Ken's using for, oh my goodness. So jambalaya, <laughs> which is a, a Creole and Cajun tomato-based rice dish that is either meat, um, vegetables, and rice normally. Um, etouffee, which is a spicy Cajun stew with vegetables um, and seafood, or the gumbo, which is more of a strong flavored stock, a roux that we start with. The gumbo also has, of course, the Creole Holy Trinity and okra, which apparently is what gumbo means in many African languages, right? Thanks, Peter. So, and then there's this, this line for the end that says, I don't care what you make, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you can vote for two choices if you like oh. i've got um you can vote for up to two because we're not sure we might make a couple dishes you might make some side dishes i mean can you really not have red beans and put rice? it up again it's there is it still there oh. can you see it maybe yep. if you hit submit yep, yep. it's gone all right yeah, are you ready okay. i'm gonna end the poll and Reveal the results. Ready? Can I get a drum roll? Anybody? Drum roll. Thank you. Good job, Brandy. Appreciate it. So, can you make some jambalaya? And then etouffee and gumbo tied. That is not helpful, people. Okay. <laughs> Do etouffee. Yes. Etouffee. Etouffee, oh, and we yeah. make a seafood etouffee okay. here, right, Ken? So uh, anyway, my friends, yes. 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 I'll take a picture of this. So we have an official record. And I know we've run a little bit late. You know, these cooking, these cooking segments might run a little bit late. Um, and hope you enjoyed your time. Man, it was good to see some of you. Mm. Those of you who joined us new, we just love you and love on you. <laughs> Please make sure we have your email address and your cell phone if you'd like to get a text. Um, but we're going to go ahead and and close the recording. I learned that last time I left the recording on too long. <laughs> we're going to close the recording. And then if any of you would like to, to stay and really get into the, the weeds of this a little bit, I know I had to maintain timing in between, um, but we'll do the... Um, we'll do the, get into the weeds a little bit if you'd like to. All those cooks are eaters. Anybody... Anybody want to just give me a hands up? You want to see this again? Did you like Sanctuary Kitchen? Got some yeses? Got some yeses, all right, all right. Then bring a friend. Everyone has to eat, right? Everyone has to eat, and some of us have to cook. <laughs> have a I'm watching. I'm gonna close off the recording, and then we are here to get into the weeds of this, if you'd like to. Any of you have to, have to jump off. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming. We love you here at Sanctuary Online. <laughs>